Welcome to the second part of series 19, everyone. In this series, we'll be covering character creation for a really interesting game, One Last Job by Grant Howitt. We are welcoming back Chris Foster to the show, and we might actually be breaking our format a little bit. Uh, maybe just slightly and kind of playing a game. Um, well, we'll see how it goes. It will make more sense when we get into the actual episode, so stay tuned. Also, if you are enjoying the show, uh, please consider leaving a rating or a review on Apple Podcasts. The more five-star reviews that we get, the better the show does in the rankings, and that means more people will be able to find the show easier. Also, good reviews will make us incredibly happy, so it'd be really great to see more of those since we're running out right now. And once Amelia and myself are able to record the cold opens together again, we'll be reading your reviews right here, and it'd be really great to read more of them. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's get on with the show. Enjoy! Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan, and this episode, my co-host, Amelia, and I welcome back Chris Foster, host of Playtest Podcast, for a special series of episodes covering, covering smaller games. This week, we are talking about One Last Job by former guest Grant Howitt a game about criminals trying to make up for a job gone wrong. Chris, welcome back to Character Creation Cast. Are you ready to do all of this again? Uh, okay, but only one last time. Okay, one last oh. job. <laughs> Except for that part where it's not, that, you know, that's for later. Except for that part where it's the middle job. <laughs> <laughs> one middle job. Uh, Grant, we one need a hack of your to, game. One second to last job. <laughs> Less one, one day from sort of, I guess job. if I have to version of. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I need the money. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> awesome. Uh, so let's have you re reintroduce yourself uh, and remind the listeners where they can find you and what you are up to. Uh, okay. So hi, I'm Chris. Uh, as previously established, I am. Eh, uh, <laughs> I run the Playtest podcast and I design games. Uh, if you go check out playtest.itch.io, you can find my game, uh, Dabini, which uh, all, any money that you spend on that goes to making the game better. So help. Yeah, do it. <laughs> it sounds really cool. It is. It's about a 17th century disaster bisexual. Who I, I mean, I just love. Like She's my hero. Yeah, I love her so much. <laughs> I read her story. I'm like, oh my God. I, I can only ever hope to be as cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, none of us could, like, we would all, we would get arrested immediately if we were as cool as her. Right. <laughs> but I still wish it. That's amazing. She was, she was sentenced to death by burning, like, wow. even in the 17th century. Oh. It didn't stick. It didn't <laughs> stick, no. <laughs> I got better. <laughs> I got better. They just couldn't catch her. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get into this, and we will start by discussing what this game is all about. What's in a game? What's in a game? <laughs> What's in a game? Hey, Gamma. 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 Uh, so what sort of things do we need to play uh, One Last Job? You need a lot of details. <laughs> did, did I see a note of up to 15 D10s? The the that's from the book. It says up to fifteen d ten. I okay. I have a lot of dice. I don't know if I have fifteen d ten. Are you serious? <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure I do, but I don't have them handy. Like I would have to go to my my uh, dice tackle box that's <laughs> packed away somewhere. I think I have. I think I probably have at least fifteen. You, if you have played L five R for any length of time, 
Yeah. You have that Fourth many. edition. Yeah. Well, because they come in sets of 10. Like you oh. need like 10 D10. And then you, you know, so. You, you, you're, because they're dice and we're all. Well, I mean, like, you can't tell me you that you've never had to, like, do, like, 7K4. To, you know, yeah. like, you need extras. Cause, yeah. Yeah. I have at least, yeah. I can tell you that for sure I have at least two sets of 10s, like, mm-hmm. that go together have, plus all the other. I have, yeah, I have one set of 10 for sure. And then 17,000 sets of a full set of dice. So I, there's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's D10s in there. I mean, Look, fair. you guys, if you are any kind of actual gamer, it's not hard. You should have oh, no. 15. Real sets. gamers have crippling dice debt. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, after you've bought all of those supplement books that we talked about last time, oh, gosh. then comes the dice problem. <laughs> oh, gosh. I've bought three sets of Fantasy Flight Games dead sets uh, and a set of Genesis dice, so... Yeah, I have one set of Genesis dice. Oh, no, I guess I don't have the Genesis. I have one set of Star Wars dice, three or four sets of L5R dice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dice are... I, I like good. them. Dice good. Dice good. <laughs> dice good. Dice good. Contra- so you need a lot of them for this one. I, I'm mostly the GM. Uh, I think the players in this, uh, you're probably looking at three, uh, five or six at most, and that's if everything you have applies to it. Mm, okay. uh, but the GM has to have like a pool of dice that keeps getting bigger. That's interesting. Yeah. I like that. I like dice pools. Mm. So what else do we need for this game? So you need poker chips or some other tokens that are in two different colors to track your grit and stamina. Mm-hmm. Or you could write it down. On the character sheet that's provided where it has spots for them. <laughs> or if could, you've bought yeah. sets of dice that aren't the sets of D10s, yep. you could use other dice. Yep. Uh, you just got to keep them to track different the, the two different uh, spendable currencies. Very cool. What uh, do characters do in this game? A job. Just one of them, though. The last one? Or is it like the first one or the middle one? Well, we've established at least two, because you could do the second to last. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh but yeah, so your criminals, uh, I think they're like, you can, you can twist this different ways, but the idea is you're, you're a, a ragtag band of, of miscreants getting put together for one last big job. It could be a, a, a heist, it could be an assassination, it could be whatever. It's just something big uh, and action-based, uh, and that's it. That's literally what you do. Well, it's something that requires planning, right? Right. Well, and I think part of the premise, too, is that like this is to sort of redeem yourselves for something that went wrong previously i don't know if it's it's supposed to be technically yeah so it's supposed to be you're you're going back the last job you did went bad and you're going to try to do it right this time Mm -hmm. or something to that effect Mm -hmm. so uh bakery competition yeah 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 Uh, it's a bake sale bake sale (laughs) competitive bake (laughs) one last bake sale and then we're done one last (laughs) coffee shop Hmm. oh no Oh my goodness. All right. Well, let's go ahead and briefly talk about uh, the collaborative nature of the process uh, that this game entails, uh, where we build the setting, job, and characters together. Is that right? Mm-hmm. So the, the, in the book, it does say like the GM should come up with, with this thing, or uh, you can work together for it, which I, I if, if there's the option to collaborate, why wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. Uh, especially since this, is, this game is specifically, you're going to play it once. Like you don't need to, you don't need to plan a whole bunch of stuff. Like let's all do this together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and actually, in this game, you even even the GM can't really plan anything. <laughs> that makes a lot uh, of sense. But the, I think the most important thing about this one is that you literally never make a character choice for yourself. Uh, well, that's a lie. You can uh, re- re- refute or or like say no to an option someone else gives you, uh, and but you don't get to change it. It's just no, you don't get that, and you don't get the bonus you would have gotten for taking it. Oh, interesting. So yeah. it's not like, no, I don't like that. Let me give you something else then. It's yeah. like, no, I, I don't mean, like that. Well, you still, don't get They can still come back later and establish another fact about you. It's, it's more of just like, a, uh, I don't really want my character to have done that in the past. Thank you. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, very cool. Yeah, but the whole character creation process is done by like sort of like a round robin, like question answering kind of a thing that like, mm-hmm. So you're not picking out things for your own character. It's other people saying, here's a fact that I know to be true about mm-hmm. and you. Even more so, like, technically, the meat of your character, the mechanics of your character uh, don't actually get established until you're playing the game. Hmm. You, you learn about the background and, like, your career and stuff in the intro, in the character creation. But then, like, as things 
go wrong, uh, you learn more about your characters through flashbacks or anecdotes is what they're called in the game. Hmm. Yeah, it's a very unique system, which is part of why I'm really excited to talk about it, because yeah. it's not like anything we've really done before. So, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Before we dive in and start this very weird process, let's talk about concepts, um, terms that people might need to know. What are some things that we we should understand before we get into it? So it's it's pretty simple. I think the only terms they use uh, that that aren't obvious are grit and stamina. Mm-hmm. Uh, so grit is you can I think you can spend a grit uh, to gain three extra dice on a roll uh, or to restore your stamina. Um, and then so there's the only two uses you can have for grit. You start the game with two two grit, uh, and you can get grit for like establishing uh, uh, more characters in in a thing to to bring people in things to uh, uh, you get. Uh, grit, grit for that and then stamina is just your endurance and health uh, if you ever hit zero uh, stamina in a scene you have to you take a, a consequence for it like you could lose one of your abilities one of your abilities can go down by one permanently uh, you could uh, leave flee the scene or something or one of the options is uh, you betray your party yes uh, and become an npc um and the, the interesting thing there is once you've picked an option from those lists uh, you can't pick that again. So if you get messed up a lot, eventually you're just going to leave or betray your friends. I love it. Uh, a lot of this game is about not having agency over your character. <laughs> yeah, which is very, it's very weird uh, mm-hmm. for a lot of us. A lot of people really don't like that lack of agency. I sometimes really like it. I, I think it probably depends mm-hmm. on who you're playing with. Uh, and I, I shouldn't say probably, on... really, really does depend on who you're playing with. Yeah. Uh-huh. But it's a fun a fun space that I like to explore that I don't think a lot of games do because I think a lot of us are like, no, my character is mine. Don't touch them. Uh, and I, I think the thing that makes it so much better in this one is you know that going in, like you're playing this game understanding you don't have that much agency over your right. character and you're, you're, this is like the very collaborative mm-hmm. uh, situation. So don't play with people who are going to make bad choices. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Once again, as always, we'd like to remind you don't play with jerks. No, don't play with jerks. Yeah. That goes I, for, I did it for way too long. That goes uh, for every <laughs> single game that you can play. Just don't play with jerks. Mm-hmm. Yep. Always solid advice. Are we ready to do this? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's help each other make some people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let's make some people. Uh, so the first step is we have to pick a setting. Uh, they have a bunch, like the, a lot of this book is just the settings. Um, so we, and we'll reference this later. Or, or we don't have to reference it, but it gives you like ideas for what's going on. It, it keeps us all on the same page. Uh, I, I don't know if I don't want to list all of them. The, the obvious one is professional criminals, but there's a lot of them like cyberpunk and Wild West. Uh, if you, if, I don't know if you want to scroll through them, see if any of them jump out at us or what. Yeah, I'm going to scroll through here and oh see. Oh my gosh. Investigators working against the great god Cthulhu or <laughs> cultists in service of the same. It's a setting that's interesting. Um, Cyberpunk is always good. Uh, Y'all done Headspace though, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, we have. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not feeling Wild West or mm-hmm. Professional Criminals. I know. I mean, but, I really like Investigators working against Great God. Yeah, Cthulhu. I, 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 I was going to say it sounds or like cultists. And so, cool. should we be working against Cthulhu or are we cultists? Uh, I would kind of want to be a cultist. We just, we're know. just magical girls. I know. I, okay. I mean, I asked that question and I was going to try and be impartial because um, we all know what I'm going to say. Well, here, and be... here's the secret. I was thinking cultists too. <gasps> oh, oh. Ryan, I, I love what I've done to you. Uh, I blame you for my newfound evil. I'm, I'm okay with that. So the, the important thing to, to take from this right now is also this is on page 30 so we can reference that again uh is this sets what our actual abilities are uh our abilities are blood which uh, we roll to hurt people give sacrifice or uh (laughs) endure torment wow Uh, secrets which is knowing hidden things cast ritual magic search for information uh shadows is sneak lie cheat or steal or hide and money which is fund bribe buy or gamble wow this is amazing. Uh, so it's important to note that unless we establish that you, someone is bad at something, we can't establish that someone is good at something. So at the start of the game, all of these abilities start at two. Okay. Hey, we're really good at this. <laughs> uh, in fact, we are exceedingly average at all four of them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't correct us, Chris. It's our show. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> 
I just have to uh, use any reference to the Soth episodes of She's a Super Geek. <laughs> really good at that. That's possible. It's very good. That's the so those are the episodes that I ended up. They they jokingly asked a a listener to put uh, purple glitter in their beards. Uh, oh, yeah. And I have Amazing. I had a very big beard at the time, and I was like, "This is my moment." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I swear there's still purple glitter in my sink. In the- I <laughs> remember years. that. <laughs> it was so uh, good. That was, oh, there's was so much glitter in my beard. <laughs> like, you should have, I took a shower to try to get it out, which I don't know if it was a mistake or not, but my entire tub was stained purple oh, no. afterwards. It, it, I suffer for my art. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember, I think that was like around the time like I first started following you on Twitter too. I was like, this dude's Possibly. got a purple that's, beard. That's, I literally, I do, not re- I do not remember, as far as I know, I have always followed you on Twitter, which I know can't be true. Right? <laughs> but I did think about it. I'm like, I don't know where I met. <laughs> I know. I like, I know that I started following you either like around that time or like around when you were on Jim's show. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, you, and you, I don't know if you followed me back at some point, but I remember I your purple did. beard. Yeah. It's very good. It's very good. Uh, All right. So we're going to be cultists. Cool. Yes. Which, so so we, I'm really excited. So we get to answer the questions or? Uh, so, that, no. So we pick the setting first. Those questions are for. Uh, we, yeah, yeah, we can. Like, so this is the next part is thinking of a job together. Um, and then we'll, we'll uh, define what, the, what that job was, where it was. Uh, and then we all take turns adding one terrible thing that happened. Awesome. So, uh, we are here to, so this isn't the new, this is the, this isn't the, these things are the jobs we're going to do now. And we can use one of those to say what the job that went bad last time was. Okay. Oh. Uh, but the specific example in, in the other one was, uh, th- the job we're going to do was kill somebody like Mad Jack or something like that. And then the previous job was the job that went so bad that Mad Jack went mad. Uh, oh. <laughs> so. Interesting. Uh, are any of these interesting specifically to anybody? Uh, let's see. I, I like uh, Breakout of this Mental Hospital to Save the World. And I like it's, I like how it would be like Save the World from our perspectives, which means <laughs> Summon Cthulhu. Yeah. Uh, okay, so... I mean, as long as everybody's okay with that, I know mental hospitals are weird for some people. Yeah, I'm okay with it. I was, uh, I I was think... allowed to leave mine. It was only a day program. <laughs> they did let us use butter knives. It's very exciting. <laughs> so I think that means that the last job that went so bad was the job that got us put in here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, oh, I was so, thinking that that was the last job. Yeah. The breaking out was the last job. Oh. Oh. Uh, and that went terribly. Yeah. So okay. Like we got out, here? but there's like massive amounts of uh, bad things happened. It's like a manhunt. <laughs> No, because we we gotta go the other way. They we've got to be doing something. Oh, that's not true. Running from something. Yeah, yeah. So I think that the first one was what got us in here, and now we're gonna break out. Okay, yeah. I like that too. Uh, so so yeah, I like that. Break out of this mental hospital and save the world by summoning. <laughs> I would like save the world to be in air quotes. Air quotes. Yeah. Uh, so we gotta take turns adding one terrible thing that went wrong during our last job. Um, and uh, I've got one. Okay. Uh, we we. We're, we decided to summon Cthulhu by uh, uh, sacrificing a politician on City Hall, oh. like the steps of City Hall, uh, and turns out we're bad at finding the parts you're supposed to stab somebody. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. And it didn't work. Turns out the that squishiest parts are not necessarily the best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we had a botched sacrifice oh, no. in public. Okay. What else went wrong last time? Um, I think that even once we did figure it out, he was like not an important enough politician. Like he was just an alderman, Wait, like or like the, a school board assistant? member, school board trustee, or something. <laughs> <laughs> like he oh, was that, like the- so we could only technically with what we gave them only summon like a lesser god because he just like yeah. wasn't an important enough sacrifice. They were either. running for a higher office though. That's where our confusion was. Yeah. They weren't they in that higher office yet. yet. <laughs> he wasn't the incumbent, but we thought that he was. We just, like, clearly did not do our research. Yep. No. We've been too busy researching uh, 
arcane texts. We yep. don't know about right. So we don't know where to politics. stab anybody, and we don't know. Uh, I like the idea that like the the actual idea is that we're supposed to be hyper competent. And now- <laughs> well, but here's the thing: is like I think that we are competent, just like competent cultists right not at like the actual sacrifice part like we are very good at like we know the texts like backwards and forwards yeah yeah we, we are really great at theory not so much practice <laughs> all right ryan what else went bad last time <laughs> um i'm gonna say uh we were supposed to do it at um you know in the middle of the night but because of circumstances, we had to up the deadline, and we uh-huh. actually did it in the middle of the day uh-huh. when it was most like crowded. Rush hour. Yeah, like rush hour, and just tons of people around. We're like, we got it. This is our only chance. If we don't do it now, you know, it. it, it we're never going to get this chance again, and it, it'll probably be fine because it's midnight mm-hmm. somewhere. <laughs> it's not ten a. It's a cosmic horror. This the cosmos. Yeah. It's midnight somewhere. It had a it had a good amount of logic attached to it. I think yeah. that Not... we couldn't tell if it was midnight or noon. <laughs> it was twelve o'clock. It just said twelve. It just it's said twelve, 12. o'clock. <laughs> we mix up AM and PM. It's fine. <laughs> I can never remember Look, which you... one's noon. Is it AM or PM? <laughs> when you're translating like the text we're translating from did not have the same clock we had. If you had to make some assumptions, we assumed wrong. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we're just really terrible cultists. <laughs> this is what if, what if, soft. What if it was something like that, where it's like when the stars are in this position, blah, 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 and we we calculated it out, but we calculated it to noon instead of yeah instead of midnight. Yep. Just had one, we didn't carry the one. Yeah, we didn't oh, carry gosh. the one in one spot. <laughs> or uh, from the text, we didn't carry the... <laughs> <laughs> It'll trip you up every time that thing. <laughs> yep. Uh okay. So we know what went bad last time and we know we all land we all landed us in uh, a mental hospital. Uh the um the next thing we do is we got to figure out, figure out who the boss is and it, it's kind of obvious the boss is our cult leader, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh so who is we got to name this cult leader and, and I I feel like it, 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 it their name's probably like Dave or Janice, but we can't call them that. Like the dark one? What do we? What do? Hmm. We... Let me see. This is supposed to be someone of power that we all have to, li- or at least one mm-hmm. of us has to listen to. The the harbinger. The harbinger. <laughs> the harbinger of destiny. Mm-hmm. The dark harbinger. The great fishy one. <laughs> the great fishy one. Captain Magic Harp. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what? I'm just gonna keep getting sillier until someone. <laughs> I'm just trying to think, like. <laughs> Hmm. The esoteric one. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like the harbinger is good. The harbinger? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. So one of us has to play the harbinger, uh, at least at first. It's not our character in the actual thing, but one of us has to play uh, the, the harbinger who is setting up this job, who visits us in the hospital and tells us that they've recalculated the signs. And uh, there's still time. It's time. It's time again. Yes. So who wants to do that? Or do y'all want me to? I want you to. Yeah. Okay. I can't I can't play that. Uh so the way <laughs> this happens is I introduce the first character. It's the person uh who uh, uh we need to get this job done, right? Uh and I give a name. I, you, when you would introduce someone, you have to give a name, uh imply their profession and a problem they can overcome. Uh once, once y'all get, and and I'm so I'm gonna say a character, and then one of you has to say, "Oh, that's me." Okay. Uh, so I think the harbinger is like, look, we we get like a scene of. Also, I love this because y'all always say, "Oh, it's okay, we never have to play these." Guess what, nerds? Y'all gotta play these for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Who invited you? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh. I'm pretty sure you did. Gosh darn it. Uh. So uh, the harbinger, we see the harbinger like in like a dimly lit cave somewhere. There's like a dripping water sound from somewhere. Uh, it, uh, just, you can't smell anything because we don't have smell vision, but you know this place is moldy. Uh, mm-hmm. You got this huge tome, and suddenly uh, they look up, and we can't see their face because it's shattered, shadowed by a, a cowl. And they say, "It's time again. I need to get McCracken on this one. <laughs> I have to be McCracken." 
McCra- McCracken is the only one who, ha- who knows where the ceremonial dagger is kept. Uh, so then, with that, we cut to uh, the Harbinger coming to find McCracken. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. So, uh, the implied profession there is you're, uh, you're a sacrificier. Mm-hmm. You have a you have a ceremonial dagger somewhere. Mm-hmm. I've got it. I've got the ceremonial dagger hidden away. Yeah, uh, it's a very specific. So we one. see. I th- Sorry, what? It's a very specific dagger. Yep. Uh, so we see uh, uh, the outside of a. Uh, actually, we got to turn to you. We got to go to you now, McCracken. Oh. Uh, so I, we all know where we are, but we've got to talk. We got to get into like uh, you introduce. Um, sorry. Uh, you explain what you've been up to and how the boss convinces you to take the job. So, okay. So I explain what I've been up to. Yep. And how, okay. I've been stuck in this uh, mental hospital. Right. For the past, let's say, almost a year. Uh, because the, there's no way they're letting this out. And, and we keep talking about, you know, really, really strange things. Mm-hmm. And uh, speaking in very strange languages with each other. Yeah. What else do I have to? Uh, how the boss convinces you to do the job? Oh, okay. I think uh, the boss, uh, the harbinger, gives us um, a way out of like like there. There's a chance to get out of here, mm-hmm. uh, but you have to break out. Yeah. And when you do, if we can get your dagger. Which only you know where it is and how to get it, because um, it's you know hidden in a complex mm-hmm. puzzle of sorts. Because why wouldn't it be? Exactly right. Where um, you keep your ceremonial dagger? I you know. Not let anybody get to mine. Well, this is the yeah. this is the only one that will summon Cthulhu. Yeah. Yeah. This is the Cthulhu dagger. The Cthulhu dagger. Yep. Capital T. And I think they give. Uh, they say, yeah, it's. You know, last time it didn't go well, but this time we've checked the numbers and now, now we know exactly when it needs to be. Yeah. And it's I think this soon. is pretty, it's pretty easy to convince us to do this, these yeah. jobs because we're, we're under lock and key. Yeah. Uh, we're already zealous. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, so now that you're convinced, the boss has convinced you, you've got to say, okay, but it's not so simple. We're going to need this. And then you introduce a character that can solve that problem. Oh, okay. okay. So under uh, scene uh, on your character sheet under scene leader dur- during, you would put sacrifice because your your character will be the scene leader during the sacrifice scene. Oh, interesting. Because that's what you're good at. Okay. Scene leader sacrifice. Interesting. Oh gosh, uh, what do we need to? Uh... Okay. So there's a there's a list you can look at for um, inspiration, or you could just take one of them I, off of it. All right, I got an idea. Okay. So it's not so simple. We need the chanter. They are the only person that will be able to recite the proper words. Okay. Uh, do you want to be the chanter, or would you like me to be the chanter? Hmm. Hmm. I think you would be a good chanter. Okay, I'm going to be the chanter. This does mean you're stuck with whatever I make up for you. <laughs> I... <laughs> I may regret trusting you, but I trust you. <laughs> oh, and I got to give you a name too, don't I? Yep. Well, uh, yeah, because I called you McCracken. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> the best chanter I know is right here in this hospital. One, oh, lordy, names. Okay, so we're going with the, uh, what's, a, what's a good, uh, okay. Um <laughs> Uh, McAlboleth? McAlboleth? Alboleth. <laughs> Alboleth? That's another, uh, D&D sea creature. Okay. McAlboleth. Okay. So, now I tell you what my character has been up to, and then we actually have to have, uh, a, 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 a scene, uh, where you convince, you come to recruit me. Uh, so... I should have gone with Siren. Siren's fine. I'll go with Siren. Siren's better. Siren. Uh, so Siren, uh... There's a problem with Siren. You know, Siren uh, ha- may have gone soft. Siren has been acting good. Siren has been denying 
everything and saying like, no, I'm be- I feel better. I don't want to summon Cthulhu anymore. But our uh, therapy is really doing its job. Therapy's really doing its job. Uh, and to the point where uh, Siren is the groundskeeper uh, inside the inside oh. the area, obviously. Uh, Siren may have gone uh, rogue. So yeah, you see Siren, I think Siren is just like has a rake in the, in the garden area and is raking. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so do we have to play out recruiting siren that you could we don't have to here but that's the idea okay is you have to give you'd have to give siren a reason to come help you oh that's interesting what would be a good reason for siren to help oh we did it perfectly last time except the time this is the only time to redeem ourselves and this time it'll work uh (laughs) so i think siren would put up a bit of a fight like oh but everything's fine here they're not they're not putting me (laughs) They're letting me, you know, go outside. How did you get out here? <laughs> <laughs> they said you couldn't find me. Uh, uh, he looks around for the helper. I like the idea that McCracken, because McCracken is the one who can get this done, is just like, all right, cool, and throws a bag over the siren <laughs> and drags them out, out of the garden. That sounds fine. This is fine. Because we're cultists. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we do. This is called Saturday uh, night. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so we have like the dark meeting room. I think we're in like the janitor's closet with the boss <laughs> together. <laughs> uh, and, and we're like, I'm like, okay, fine. Okay, so I'm in here. Uh, I, I can chant. You can do the sacrifice. Uh, but we're going to need to get out of here. And you know what that means. <laughs> we're going to have to get the moth. Have to the get- Death Eater. <laughs> Death Eater. <laughs> oh no. Ah. What does this mean, Chris? <laughs> the silent poisoner. Oh my god. Paula. <laughs> <laughs> which which one of those am I? Uh, you're all of them. <laughs> all of them. The moth. Death Eater. The poisoner. Paula. Paula. Paula's your name. <laughs> okay. Okay. You have a lot of titles. Your your many, many secret uh, (laughs) students. Okay. All right. Paula. (laughs) And the implied profession is, I guess, killer. (laughs) Someone who can get us out of here. Okay. These are probably not good people that we're playing. (laughs) Uh, No, Ryan. No. We're cultists. We're trying to end (laughs) the world. Doomsday cult. (laughs) (laughs) We're trying to save the world. Come on. This world needs more Cthulhu. So this, you're the scene leader during the escape. Okay. Yeah. So now, what do I have to establish? Because now we've all had our character. So like, I don't have to say anything about anybody else's character now, right? right? So what do I have to say? What do I have? You to You don't have us? to say. So so normally this would be uh, you would just introduce the last character. Like the last character gets introduced and you start the game. Okay. Uh. So uh, this is where. So we're not actually going to play the game, obviously. Right. Uh, because it would take hours. <laughs> uh, but. I think it would be interesting to establish some things about our characters mm-hmm. during sure. this ca- this thing. Um, and this kind of rolls into our fan fiction at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we're going to see how this would go. So the idea is uh, you don't establish a fact about a character until you fail. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and so I think it'd be interesting to go through and each of us say something we failed at doing. Uh, and then when you do, one of us gets to establish a fact. And the facts are, uh, if you're bad at some, here's the thing. We're, we're not going to worry about the bad, ba- being bad at something. It's just, if you want to establish that they're the best person at that, uh, then one of us has to decide we're the worst person at that. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, and the way that works is when you fail and they establish this fact, you get an additional die because you're better at that and you get to roll again. The other thing is you can say a legend about somebody. You could say like, this is weird. Last time you did this, you were like, you used to be real good at this. Like, remember back when you did this, uh, you're basically supposed to insult people to make them better. <laughs> uh, or you can get, uh, establish a piece of equipment they have. Or like, hey, try it again with your thing. Your ceremonial murder dagger. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then there are also scars. Uh, if you, so this is the, that's the only way to ensure a success. If you fail and you say, like, the last time this went bad, you lose a point in a stat. Uh, but you automatically get a 10 in that, in, in that roll. Uh, so uh, I think, so at, at first... Uh, the first part is obviously the escape, right? Mm-hmm. So Amelia fails at something, right? Amelia, what do you fail at during the escape? 
I think I fail at making an excuse for why we are out past our curfew time. Uh, so, like, we bump into somebody making rounds and, you know, like, I kind of bumble through it. Like, oh, we had to go. Our group session went late. So, we were all going to go over to uh, the thing and walk back that way, which is definitely where our rooms are, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Sounds believable uh, to me. Yeah. So at that point, one of us, would, one of us would like grab the grab Paula, the the silent poisoner, <laughs> <laughs> and say like, uh, so like to establish a legend and say like, I remember that time where you convinced that that city bus driver that he had stolen our bus. <laughs> what the? <heck? laughs> you remember? You remember? You were the person who I convinced do. the city I bus do. driver. Yes. Yes. It was. I, not a good bus. I, I didn't really want that bus, but yes. I this did. isn't a good mental health person. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Okay. Get back in there. Okay. So uh, you would write down your legend there. C- convinced a bus driver <laughs> that they had stole the bus. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, and in that case, anytime that legend would come up, you would get an additional die. It's bound to come up all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. That's amazing. Uh-huh. Okay. So uh, the obvious next part would be during the chant. Yep. Uh, uh, of something I mess up, and I think, uh, I, like we've established, the siren was kind of like weird and anxious before. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think I think um, they fail at. Uh, um, I think there's like a, a series of chants that go up to it, mm-hmm. and like the, the, each step is a different magical effect, and like the second step is supposed to like deafen all non-believers in the area. And I failed at that. Okay. So one of y'all can establish a piece of equipment, a scar, a legend, or say that I'm the best at something. Okay, hold on. Um, so I'm trying to look look at exactly like what. Um, you're turning failure into a statistically unlikely success. Okay, so if we did like equipment, like I could say that like I have your book of chants or something like yeah. that, right? Like, and I could give that to you. And I, so, so you'd be like, yeah, oh, I should have given this to you. All the time. Oh. oh. <laughs> No, Siren, hang on, hang on. Um, what? Let me, okay, two seconds. It's like right. shuffling through like this giant duffel bag of stuff that we brought along with us. Like, yeah. I pulls out this like huge, heavy, like dusty book that doesn't look like it should even fit in that bag. And instead of like the, the choir chants, we get <laughs> sound. <Yep. laughs> the whispers. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and like around it is like weirdly darker than it should be. Uh-huh. I say I brought this because I didn't know how long we were going to be in here, and they you said I could boogie. pack a bag. And then, so um, I think this is yours. Uh, so, so, so then I would write down like book of unknowable chance. <laughs> yes, I and tried to. I, I to tried to read it, and I like I I don't know. Like none of the words were still on the page. Everything was like moving around. And now that now that Siren doesn't have to do this from memory, yep. <laughs> I get to I would get to roll again. Awesome. Uh, and so the last part is would obviously be assassinating someone <laughs> with this dagger or finding the dagger. It's up to like whatever. How, what do you think you failed at? I think um, I think we failed at um, tying up the individual properly. <laughs> um, so uh, I imagine that the dagger was like in the courtyard at the mental health facility. That's where we hit it. Yeah. Uh, like somehow we, we got it there because we knew if we ever had to get it, get out, it would have to be nearby. Um, but yeah, I think just something as simple as like tying them up to getting them prepped to be sacrificed. Uh, yeah. So like you're, you're struggling to tie them up and it's not going well. And then like, Unless you have a better idea, let me. Like, I think uh, like like um, Siren's like, yeah, you haven't. You've been kind of crap at, at rope tying since that mayor bit you on the wrist, and now you're all finicky and scared, <laughs> coward. <laughs> Tie him up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, at this point, you can't lose stamina. Like the person would be kicking at you and stuff. Maybe you would lose stamina. Yeah, but now you can't because we've established you have a scar of vicious human wrist bite. <laughs> Uh, and, and in that case you would get, you would lose one of your abilities. Like one of your abilities would go, oh oh, no, you don't have any above three. So you wouldn't, um, 
but you would you would uh, get two grit for accepting it. Okay. Uh, and you would automatically succeed at this. When you turn one of your d10s into a ten. Nice. Uh, so that's basically how it would go. You do legends equipment and scars nice. as you go through and fail. I don't know if we want to do one more run through to flesh them out more. If you get the idea and we have an idea for these characters and want to move on. Let's do one more. Okay. So let's, let's, let's do it. Let's flip it around though. Uh, so I think during the escape, which is, which is the one uh, Paul is running mm-hmm. uh, siren uh, siren got startled and just, you know, they're the chanter. So she, she's very loud. She's like, she's got, she can project. Mm-hmm. I think her day job was like, a, an actor uh, <laughs> uh and so when when i got startled i alerted the entire wing of this this thing uh so what do you what do y'all say or do at that at that point i'll just like grab her by the shoulders and like shake her you can do this you can handle this do you remember that time that you were on stage in front of four hundred thousand people and you had to sneak in tiny bits of this chant so that we could prepare everything to be ready. And it was in the middle of some weird Shakespearean tragedy. I'm going to be honest, I wasn't paying attention to which one. <laughs> but you had to, like, sneak all of the lines in there. Like, if you weren't afraid while you were doing that, you can handle this. It will be fine. You're right. You're right. I was... There was... There were critics at that performance. <laughs> there were. They were going to write newspaper articles. It was the New York Times. <laughs> times yeah i can handle this uh so i'd write down chanted during a play (laughs) in front of four hundred thousand people that's amazing i don't know what play this was i don't know why other people were seeing shakespeare (laughs) don't worry about it It i established it it. now it's true there was a live camera (laughs) uh it was yeah they were streaming it yeah (laughs) Love that a lot. It's like uh, Shakespeare at the Central Park. Mm-hmm. So in that case, the, the way I would do that is I like then I would get to try again with an additional die. Uh, so so that so we'd get through that. Uh, so w- what's another step that y'all failed at that wasn't in like in one of our sections? Wait, what if what what sections? Sorry. So not in uh, not in the escape because you already failed in the escape. Uh-huh. For instance. So in the during the chant or during the sacrifice, what's a way that uh, Paula messed up? Okay. Or failed? What'd she fail at? Um, I think during the sacrifice, she was supposed to like uh, sedate this person uh-huh. so that they weren't as you know, like they were a little more willing to come along with us and <laughs> you know be sacrificed. Mm-hmm. Um, and you are the silent poisoner, as it were. <laughs> yes, right. Uh, to poison them into being silent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, she did not do it correctly. I think that this person is now just vomiting a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I got something. Yeah. All right. Paula, you have so much knowledge inside of you about various poisons and whatnot, but what you don't have, and I'm going to reach around in my bag, is your medical journal that you've kept notes and stuff about all of your experiments. You can use this. I'm pretty sure there's something we can use to stop all of this mess going on. You're right. Okay, flip through. Pepto Bismol, that's what we need. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I used Ipecac, dummy. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta settle that stomach before the poison can set in. Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have poisoned her on an empty stomach. <laughs> it's like alcohol. You just don't do it. I should know better than that. <laughs> this has been a PSA from Character Creation Cast. Never poison on an empty stomach. Yep. <laughs> Theirs or yours. You might cramp. It's important to have a balanced <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> so then what else? What else did you fail at? Uh, um, McCracken? <laughs> <laughs> I want to... I I want to say, um, like I've got, like I want to fail during the chance, mm-hmm. and during the portions of the chance, uh, we all need to be silent, and my uh, my allergies to this like location like start kicking in. I can't keep it together. 
All right, so we got to give you some equipment or a legend to help you through this. Or I guess another scar if we want to be me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I, I, I got one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think like the, the, uh, the siren closes her book of unknowable knowledge uh, and like looks at you and is like, McCracken, you remember back in college? You remember how you how you paid your 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 rent in college? Betting people you couldn't snort things that you shouldn't have been putting in your nose. You used to have the immune system <laughs> of a god. <laughs> I saw you I saw you snort ground up itching powder. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> and keep it together. You can do it this time. You're right. You're right. I <sighs> I forgot how to focus, but I think, I think, yeah, you're right. I can do this. I can definitely, I can, could definitely keep it together. And I pick up like a, like a whole ground full of dust. And <laughs> <laughs> no matter what this is, it won't be as bad as that time you tried to snort lime Kool Aid powder. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, I just inhale that dust right into my my nose, and like <laughs> I got this. <laughs> just dirt all over. <laughs> oh so gosh, these your suck. your legend would be can inhale anything. <laughs> I can snort anything. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh and and so that's basically how character creation in this goes. You play through I think it's generally less silly. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know, maybe not. We we did pick the cultists path. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, cultists can be bad at things. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we did it. We finished our characters. We did it. We made some cultists. Woo! Let's make Woo. some cultists. <laughs> <laughs> Still people, Ryan. Still people. <laughs> cultists yeah. are people, cultists too. Are people, too. As we established in uh, episode zero. I don't know. No, it was like a series eight, I think, maybe. That's true. Was it when we did our one with the magpies? Was it? Or was it the robots series? Robots. Or, droids are people, too. Droids are yeah. people, too. That's very possible. Um, animals are people, too, in Mouse Guard. Yep. We need shirts that just says, like, blank are people, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be taken wrong in people. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Characters are people, too. Yes. There you go. All right. Well, uh, since our format is uh, completely thrown asunder, how about uh, we dive into uh, our discussion segment and... Uh, Ask D20 for your thoughts. D20 for your thoughts. So in this segment, we want to talk to our guests about their thoughts on the character creation process and how it feels in this system compared to others. And I want to talk about how it felt to not make your own character, but to have it done by the other people around you. Good? Bad? Ugly? (laughs) (laughs) All? Um, I I, I liked it. Mm Mm-hmm. It was interesting. Um, I I found uh, it, I'm a little bit more anxious coming up with details about other people. Yeah. Um, so my anxiety kicked in a bit more uh, than I normally do. Uh, a, like on the spot improv, mm-hmm. and B, it affecting other people. Yeah, this is a thing that we talked a lot about when we did our star-crossed stuff, when you have to trade the sheets. Yeah. Um, we talked a lot about that feeling of, like, that lack of agency, and then also the weirdness of, like, I don't want to give you something you don't want. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. But the uh, the main difference, obviously, is that star-crossed uh, adds in that layer of, like, trust, which is really important in a relationship, whereas mm-hmm. here it's just just, like, a way to kind of mess with your teammates. Right. In a, in a fun Which way. Which you're never super comfortable with. You don't love that. I don't. <laughs> so that's probably another uh, another reason uh, I had the anxiety about that. But uh, I enjoyed it. It was interesting. Yeah, I think I think it's... Um, I have always thought about, like, wouldn't it be fun if we just uh, made each other's characters, like, in whatever game we're playing. Like, here, you're playing this now. Just to challenge, like, um, tropes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Get you out of your comfort zones. Like... Uh, approach a game from someone else's uh perspective i guess um which doesn't this isn't really really what happens in this one you just kind of make jokes about each other Mm -hmm. (laughs) until until you're better at things i mean that's Uh, very on brand for grant yes i think it's i think it's pretty fun 
Uh, I, I think it's an interesting way. I wouldn't want to do it for like every game, mm-hmm. or especially not a game you have to like keep the characters. Yeah. Uh, but for a one shot with your your friends that you like, yeah, it'd be fine. Now, now I'm picturing a game where every time you go to roll a new skill, like you don't know how good or bad you are at that skill until other people like make up a story. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's just like, okay, I guess I'm really bad at what I'm about to do. So we'll see how that plays I, out. I do think it would be, I think, I think, um, not progressive, what's the word? Uh, uh, emergent character creation is an interesting concept that I, I think would be cool to see more. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know how, how to do it in a way that's sustainable. Like, I think in a yeah, longer There's a whole game, like group of, like, there's a whole school of GM thought too that I've heard about and makes me cringe are gems that like you don't know your own stats Mm -hmm. like you just roll and i'll tell you if you succeed or not oh Um, i hate that yeah that that feels feels (laughs) terrible right um like so i think trying to make sure that it's not something like that would be really difficult Mm -hmm. um to make it feel like you know i you don't know until you try Mm -hmm. because there is there's some value to that of like okay well give it a try and see how it goes yeah but that needs to be very different from like I'll tell you if you pass or fail. Well, because your your character would know if they're competent in what they're about to try. It's not it's not like they like everybody has amnesia and oh hey, I happen to be really good at fighting ninjas. Uh Right. <laughs> yeah, like my thing is like, okay, I'm somewhat coordinated. Do I know if I can do a cartwheel until I try? No, but I know that I have a level of coordination that should or should not allow me to do that. Mm-hmm. You, you know? say that. I know I have done a cartwheel in the past. But I'm not 100 percent sure I'll do it every time. I do it. Well, you're right. So you know that there's the added uh, difficulty well, of that. Like, so yep. here's my thing: is that like mentally, I know how my body should move to do a cartwheel. Yeah. yeah. Physically, I am way too bottom heavy mm-hmm. for that to ever work. <laughs> like, I have a nice sturdy base. Yeah, and I am structurally I am a, sound. 100 percent certain that I will not be able to do a cartwheel if I tried. <laughs> like it is. I'm, right, but I'm, I'm, Guaranteed failure. I'm in, the, I'm in the place where I think I could do a cartwheel and also hurt myself in the process. Right. I would hurt myself and fail at the cartwheel. <laughs> <laughs> so we got. Okay, we so got what does this have months. to do with stats again? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've established who can or cannot do cartwheels. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, you, you cover the important thing. <laughs> true. Uh, so, you know, not so much about the game, but can you do a handstand? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's that's about establishing facts of other people. Yeah. Um, and how it could go wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if uh, and and how it doesn't make sense if you're trying to do something and somebody says you're horrible at it, and then you're actually mechanically bad at it too, mm-hmm. even though uh, you would think that you were at least decent. I can see. that. Yeah, I think this game takes a lot of trust. Like, it does. Yep. It's. You definitely, you lose some of that agency, but if you're playing with people that you trust to, like, know you as a player and know, you know, kind of what you like, but also to challenge that a little bit, Mm -hmm. you know? I think that there's a lot of room to have fun there as long as everybody is, once again, not a jerk. Yep. Absolutely. So how does building a character this way change the way you play the game? I think Ryan said it a bit ago, like, you don't know what, you like, well, I guess you in this one you do, because you know you have at least baseline competency of two dice. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think it, I think it, I'll be honest. I think it makes you more likely to roll things that you would, you, your character might not actually be good at because if you fail, someone can save the role by establishing a fact about you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think you have a lot. Oh, you know what? You'd have a lot less of that problem of, uh, Oh, we've got to unlock this door. Let's wait for the unlock a door character to show up. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it, 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 like, that's the thing in the other ones. It's like, oh, if I don't have a high stat in this, I'm just not going to try it. Right. Whereas in this one, you all have the same stats. <laughs> try it and see if, say, see if, like, you need the help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's some kind of something happens after you fail, too, that sort of, you know, gives you a reason to be willing to do that. Whereas, like, in D&D or something, it's like, oh, you fail. Okay, next person's turn. Like, wait, that, we just wasted time. Yep. Right. Yeah, and... and- in games like that it's just like okay i'm gonna keep rolling until i succeed Mm -hmm. or something like that and in this game the interesting thing doesn't happen until you fail really like failing is how you flesh out your character yep Mm -hmm. that's really cool Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so do you think the process in this game still allows for a character that feels fleshed out? I like the end of it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's the interesting thing is that like, this is, this is very much a play to find out. You know, we talked about that a little bit with love and justice mm-hmm. that like you kind of, you know, narratively establish things, but this one, you both narratively and mechanically are establishing mm-hmm. things by playing the game. So really, the character creation process, we don't really know much about these people at all. Mm-hmm. I know that I stole the bus once. <laughs> I know that I apparently poison people. Uh-huh. And I know that I have a medical journal. Yeah. That's about all that we've established about Paula the Moth, Death Eater, the Silent Poisoner. And I just like to snort stuff, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. We know that you snorted stuff for money in college. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that, like mine literally is just the, the, the chanter named siren and i'm good at chanting in place (laughs) yes and i have a book you don't have Uh, stage right yeah don't have stage right uh which i think like once if you played through more we'd have even more fleshed out and also like the 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 ways we have been interacting in character would have established would have would have informed some of this would be a little more cohesive because we'd know more about each other and you because you could you in in actual play you would establish things about your character through play Mm -hmm. Whereas in this one, we're only letting each other do it through failures that we made up. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, we, we kind of did the abridged version of character <laughs> creation for One Last Job because the full version is literally playing a one-shot. Playing the entire game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I really want to play this game, though. I, I do, do think too. it would be fun it to do like, fun. A, follow-up, a follow-up episode where like we actually play the game to be able yeah. to really create the characters. Yeah, that would be That great. would be really fun. But it's a, yeah, it's a character creation system that's always fascinated me because it's it is very different mm-hmm. from yeah. anything else that I've done where you really have very little say in your own yeah. stuff other than being like, oh, that's me. Mm-hmm. This is the this is the game I always say like, uh, and I think now that I've messed with it, I think I do actually want to play the game. But uh, I think the more fun, the reason I'm wanting to play this game is to see what characters come out of it. It's like um, doing uh, uh, y'all did Traveler, right? Yep. Yes. Uh, it's like it's like that. Like I don't want to play Traveler, but I would love to roll on those tables for hours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same with this one. I, I, doing the actual job is okay. I want to see what characters come out the other end. Yeah. Is the thing. Right. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. What do we think are the flaws of this kind of system? I mean, I know we talked last time about like, oh, it does what it's meant to do, mm-hmm. and I, I mean, I do think that this one does, mm-hmm. but I think that maybe there are. Yeah. Well, Ryan touched on it earlier about like you have to be good at improv. Yeah. Uh, especially at the beginning. Where you're like, we, we don't know anything about what's going on. Like, I knew that I was going to have to come up with a, a character name for Emilio, but I was trying to think of it while we were introducing my character. Mm-hmm. And by the time I got to where I had, I needed to come up with a name for Emilio's character, I didn't have anything. So you, you heard it happen of me just like, I'm going to throw some things out there. <laughs> yes. Because uh, I was lit- I was trying. I'm like, okay, let's think of something interesting to throw to Amelia. And I just couldn't do it. And I that's what I do is I improv GM. I don't write these things down. I don't research yeah. a lot of things before I play. I do a lot of things collaboratively. And even I was like, in the moment, I don't. I yeah. Don't <laughs> yeah, it can be a little clunky. Uh-huh. And like a little bit. Um, I don't know what the word is other than clunky. It's like a deer. Like it kind of has like lots of st- stops and starts. It's yeah. kind of sputtering. Yeah. And, and if you're not used to it or if it takes a while to get into it. It, it feels like you can have a lot of those deer in headlights uh, moments mm-hmm. where it's just like you have you have no idea like what to think of. And it's like right. you're, it's your turn. You're, you're the one that has to give this detail, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And well, and I think there's an added level of anxiety to that, too, because not only do I have to like make up this detail, it's like I'm making it up about somebody else. Yep. So not only do I have to like come up with something, but it's for someone else. It's not yep. just I'm like, uh, it's like if I come up with something stupid, somebody else has to live with it. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you, for instance, call someone the silent poisoner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, my character is mute. They do not speak at all. <laughs> but this being an audio medium. That would be a little more difficult. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I don't really know if there's many flaws beyond that because that's just kind of the way it's designed. Yeah, I think that the flaw that I'm seeing here is A, the improv thing, and B, this is not a good uh, system for discussing on character creation cast. <laughs> for our, uh, we can make them and never play them policy. Uh-huh. <laughs> this game doesn't really work. Yeah, because you got to play to find out. Yeah. We're not good at that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you think going through the character creation process in this game 
<laughs> this is a silly question. Gives us clues <laughs> now that we've done it. about what gameplay will be like. Uh, yes. Literally the gameplay? Because the <laughs> yes. gameplay creates your character. <laughs> yes, we've literally played the game. So to answer that question, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Technically. That's amazing. <laughs> so. Fanfic fan- doesn't really work. <laughs> No, I do. I think we can. We can do a little bit of fanfic here. Um, so why? Why now? Like we f- we found out last time that we thought it was noon. It was actually midnight. We got that wrong. And, and so it has now to be, what changed? Like uh, there was supposed to be one of the planets was supposed to be more in one of the constellations or something like that. However, astrology works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like... Uh, Something was in retrograde, and it was Yeah, so it was, like, mm-hmm. off by, like, a degree or two in the sky. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Because we forgot to carry the... <laughs> yeah, the... <laughs> <laughs> I also think uh, it had... Uh, uh, it had to be now because, like, we started the ritual already with that non-elected official, and they just got elected. <laughs> oh. oh. So we had to... Yeah. This was the same person? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no. yeah, well, because we didn't actually kill them. This poor, no, this really poor guy. Oh no! And so now they, he was obviously able to like finish out on his campaign of like, look what strength I have. I've been through this, and I'm still running for office because I. It is so important to me that even despite almost getting murdered, I believe in democracy. We got to clean up the city, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, we got to get rid Were of these we, cultists. Was this like was it was it our master plan somehow like we actually didn't do it badly last time? We actually did succeed because we got them elected. <laughs> well, that's what we're going to tell people after. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, that we're we not knew... because we ended the world. <laughs> well, we'll be there. We'll be fine. We'll be there. We can talk to our other cultists. Yeah, people. all oh, the right. believers. Um, yes, in our, our cultist afterlife. We can tell everybody that, like, actually, we we were sh- pretty sure that he wasn't going to get elected, and so it was really important that we did that, and in- like, we botched that initial one so that he could run on that campaign. Yeah. Like, yeah. we sacrificed we a year of our lives yeah. in that mental hospital. Yep. We for you. We knew that that planet was two degrees off. We just, you know, we did what we had to do. Writing. We couldn't tell anybody because we knew that nobody'd go along with our plan. Telling these stories, writing on the backs of Cthulhu, mm-hmm. <laughs> living in his tentacle beard. Bathed in his glorious slime. Yep. (laughs) Such is the life. Becoming one with the the skin. (laughs) Gross. (laughs) Yuck. (laughs) I didn't pick cultists. I did. I did. You did. You said a little bit you wanted it. (laughs) I can't bail out of this one. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) No, we have the audio to prove it. Uh Uh-huh. Crap. That's amazing. Oh, this was a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for joining us for our cultist theme one last job episode. Uh, can you go ahead and remind the folks where they can find you online? Uh, yeah, you can find me at Iolo on Twitter or Iolo if you're not me. Uh, and <laughs> you can listen to the Playtest podcast. Thank you again. Thank you everyone for listening and join us next week when we break our format again and discuss another game. Another game. Yes. Another game, Chris. It will be your one last job. Finally. Because then we're going to kill you. Oh, (laughs) jeez. End of episode. Oh, my goodness. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast, or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at LordNeptune, or online at LordNeptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at GingerReckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, 
We have links to various freeview platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you'll find other great shows like Asians Represent. Asians Represent celebrates Asian creators and diversity in the gaming community. Join hosts Agatha Chain and Daniel Kwan as they discuss gaming, genre, and representation with their guests, and occasionally argue with each other to the sound of Agatha's beloved Airhorn app. E. Oh, beautiful. Uh, Delicious waveforms. Tastes like cereal. <laughs> that was last episode. <laughs> last time on that, Character that's Creation a, Cast. That's a callback. Ah, uh-huh. uh, fun. Okay. So now you can only do that one more time, or you have to do it a lot of more times. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I love giant. Oh my gosh, oh, like just like bathtubs full of dice. <laughs> yes. Oh, a bathtub. Oh gosh. I need I to don't, like, I feel dream like, I didn't know I had. I mean, I feel like that, okay, that would be like the ultimate like sensory experience for me. Just like yeah. roll around in a bathtub full oh, of like got, tiny you gotta, like, D6s. weed out the D4s, right? What? You got to weed out the D4s, Oh yeah, no, right? it'd be just like the tiny D6s. Okay, yeah. And I would be oh. real happy. Awesome. Is that like those half size D6s? Yeah, yeah, the little baby ones. You can get like Cuz I've got I've got ones. smaller ones. I've I I don't have my dice tackle box. But I've got itty bitty uh D6s that are literally like Yeah, the teeny tiny ones. No, I'm four, talking about five the ones. That, I'm talking about the ones that are like 36 to a cube. Oh yeah, there you go. If you get smaller than this, they start to look like candy and I can't be trusted. Yeah. I don't well, you, like, those are al- those already look like you got to pop them in your mouth and just crunch on them. Crunch. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh god! It hurt my teeth just to think about. <laughs> what a good episode, y'all! This is bad. I'm sorry. I apologize for. <laughs> Don't. Uh, we we were like Chris. We gotta stay on task today, and then we need um, we need some outtakes. We did not stay on task. <laughs> this is going to be the first time that we have outtakes in every series oh, or every yeah. episode. Yeah, it's gonna be good. A, a lot of firsts. Yeah. I'm know. a rebel. I mess things up. Seriously. Which be- so. There's nothing what? less true than that, Chris. <laughs> I'm 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 rebel. I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool. The more you what have to say it, the less true it is. <laughs> the coolest. I'm so. I used to be so punk rock. Okay. I've never been punk rock. I was goth, but even then, I wasn't cool because I was broke and it was, so it was just black black Wranglers <laughs> and black t-shirts. <laughs> My mom like would not like. She used to get really mad if I wore black more than like two days in a row. So I, I bought my own clothes. My parents could shove it. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I had to pay for my own, but she would still get upset about it. So, oh. uh, yeah, I'm sure that she's really loving where I'm at now. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on one second. Oh, uh, okay. It's a good legend. I feel like he needs a legend. To eat Oreos in. I swear, I heard somebody knocking on the door. I thought I did too. Uncool. But like, there's nobody there. The ghost. It's McCracken. It's, not, it's not your cottage neighbor? No. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It might have been uh, Ashley doing laundry. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. Or ghosts. Could have been ghosts. Probably a ghost did it. <laughs> Probably a I... ghost. All right. Whatever Amelia said there during that freeze will be the last lines of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do we mean to stop and say? Ah, uh, once Amelia's back. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. Stop it.